All right, friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and in this video, we have a next level X Lights tip. Uh, this series is for those of you who have been sequencing for a minute in X Lights that want to take it a little bit deeper, want to get a little more out of what you're already using in X Lights. Um, and these tips, uh, though quick, can really save you a lot of time and uh, make things more interesting. So in, in this video, I want to go over the layer settings, which are over here in X Lights in the uh, default views. So I'm actually going to go reset my window to default super quick. Get my effects over there. Cool. Um, so what we see here is we have our layer settings as this third box here. And there's, there's a couple parts of it that are really interesting and can really do a good bit for you. So I've got, first of all, I've got this vertical lines running a VU meter in this particular song. Okay, that's the effect right now. There's a couple things we can do. Uh, the first you might see is this visual element. Okay, this is actually just a way to crop within a group. You see that? And so this is kind of interesting. And there are, if you right click, there are, um, there are some presets here, like I can get the right half. Um, and then maybe, you know, one good example of this is say I just copy this. I've actually already got a second layer. I paste it. I go ahead and I change the colors. Go to a blue on this one. And then we pop this over to the other side and render it. Let's see what happens. What we then get, once it renders here, is we now get the VU meter, same effect, same group on my vertical lines, but now I've been able to get that effect on half and half. In fact, I'm even going to tweak it a little bit um, because of the way my house lays out with the carport on the side. The, it's really, there's more visual weight on the right side. And so I'm just going to take this guy on the left side and break it down a little bit. So then what we can see between those two, let it render we'll see kind of a nice half and half uh, between my vertical lines. That's pretty cool. Um, there's some other settings in here that'll really help you though. So if you're, whether you're using this bottom piece or not, this buffer, we have the ability to set a render style. Um, so that allows us within the layer to basically decide how it renders per model, per preview, um, et cetera. One example is uh, if I go to my snowflakes, let me find something with my snowflakes. That's a good one here. So here we've got this burst or this, uh, let's see if I can find a better option in this. Okay, I'm just going to change the effect type here from meteors to a, uh, to a spiral. Okay, so what that looks like if it's across this whole group is is a spiral sweeping across the whole thing. Actually, I wanted a pinwheel. That's the one, pinwheel. But say I go in here and choose a pinwheel, and now it's one big pick wheel. I'm going to pinwheel. I'm going to up the thickness here across all three. I can set the render per model, and now we see, oh, hey, within this group, it's actually breaking down how it renders per each model. So instead of having to make my snowflake group big and copy this three times to the three models, it's one effect, it's rendering per model, it's good to go. There's a lot of options in there uh, that can do some cool stuff, okay? Um, we also have the ability for the camera to be 2D or 3D if you are using the 3D. And then we have transformation. So back to our UV, our VU meter here rather, back to our VU meter. Um, the transformation allows us to literally spin the effect. So like if I spin at 90, now, once I force it to render, instead of being uh, up and down, it's now going to be a left to right uh, VU meter. Now granted, uh, with this particular example, I, I totally could have done it. Um, I totally could have done it within... Where did I go? Totally could have done it... Um, within that um i don't know why it didn't take but i could i totally could have done it within the actual effect but with some effects you're not going to be able to and having that ability to spin it on the fly um could could prove to be very valuable so we'll go here let's just say we take this guy we flip it okay there we go now it's happening side to side whereas before it was up to down uh, we also have a blur in here that's really great like see we have all these hard edges on this line 
if you want to make something more subtle, more soft, sometimes you go digging through the effects and you're like, man, I wish it were just a little softer. Just blur it. Just blur it, man. That blurs the edge really nice, gives you a really soft leading edge, uh, which I think looks really professional and good. You can even do a value curve on that. And so as you can see here, there's a lot already that you can do. Um, there's also Rotozoo. Rotozoo uh, can be <laughs> what I would consider a seasickness inducing effect. I don't use it much, but you can. And so just as an example, if we turn this on, we actually see that it, it takes the effect basically across the whole layer and throughout the, the time length of that effect, it rotates and zooms and there's there's different presets you can do what you want with it. Um, truth be told, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I know some people like it and so that's perfectly fine, right? Um, there's some different presets there. Check them out, try it. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it'll not. Um, but either way, uh, the layer settings is one of those windows that in the past, maybe you never looked at before. Maybe you never touched it. And it can do some really actually very interesting things that you may find useful in your sequencing. You may look at your display and say, hmm, you know, I wish I could just take this effect and only have it on the lower third of my house. Done. And this is a little bit different than sizing it in the effect itself because it's actually cropping it. It's cutting it off outside that, that area. And so you can do some really interesting stuff. Um, again, you know, it's one of those things when you're first starting out your first sequencing, uh, it's probably not going to be the kind of thing that you're going to do. But as, as you get more advanced and if you want to spend some more time really making your sequences uh, really in-depth and more interesting, this can be a great way to do it. And the layer settings are just one of those options that can help you get there. If you enjoyed this, be sure to let me know below in the comments. Give this video a big thumbs up and check out my free guide. It's the three things I want you to know before you buy anything in this hobby. Please go get it. Um, I want to help you save time, help you save money with this free guide. You can get it over at LearnChristmasLighting.com. Awesome. And we will see you in our next video. Thanks.